Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, uh, echolaketech.com. And in this uh, episode of the uh, calendar creation, um, we're going to do a little bit more cleanup, but we're going to also work on uh, setting up emails that will go out once the um, client has reserved a, a time. But let's first just do a little... So current events name, we no longer need this. This was um, from an original, earlier part of the design um, so that um, uh, the creator would have a, um, a title in there, but we no longer need that. Um, also note, this is the client calendar. So there are two calendars on here, client and the owner. So for the client, uh, what I want to do here is for the events, um, not only have it for when the email is empty, but I also want to make it so that if the start time, where is the start? The start time, um, it needs to be uh, greater than the current time. Okay, so basically what this is going to do is it's going to show all of the um, open time slots that are in the future. Um, so if there were time slots from yesterday, a week ago, those are no longer going to show up on the calendar for the client so that uh, it's a cleaner calendar for them. So there's that. And I also want to go and do this in the repeating group here. So start time is greater than current date and time. Again, this is just going to clean up the list here in the repeating group so that only um, events that are in the future are going to show up. Um, now, what we're going to do is get to requesting the time slot. So what we're going to do here, this is uh, the pop-up where a client goes in and types in their information. Um, what we want to do is go to the workflow here, um, make changes, and I'm going to do a, a, a right click or a double click on your on your Mac, insert an action, and we're going to send an email. And it's going to be this send email. It's not going to be the send a meeting request because we've we've already created the use the calendar, um, created the um, uh, the meeting. Uh, so send email. All right, so we are going to send this email to um, the person, the client, who's creating it. And the sender's name is going to be the person's first name, add a space, and then last name, like that. And then we're going to CC the parent group's calendar event creator email. So basically, the event that's been created, which is, say, by you um, as the owner of the calendar, um, so you create these events, so you're the creator, and then we're going to take your email and CC on the message. And then what we're going to do in the subject is... Um, let's say we are going to confirm appointment on, and what we're going to do here is take the parent group, and we're going to do the start time. And similar to an earlier video, we're going to change the format on here. Get rid of that. And you can see in the editor that over here, uh, not the editor, but well, I guess the editor, that it is updating as I delete these. All right. So basically, it's going to show the day of week, uh, month, and so on, and, and the time of the event, uh, of the appointment, rather. And then we'll just put in a Hi, and the 
first name, uh, this email confirms your appointment. Just going to move this up a little bit. Uh, and then what we're going to do is, let's see here, we'll add um, their e email, phone number, uh, subject, and um, comments like that. So then this way, put email value. So this way it's going to go to uh, both um, to confirm to the client as well as to you as the uh, creator of the, um, of the calendar. Um, so we want to get the email. We also want to get their phone number value, the subject, which I think we call the appointment name, Comments, multi-link comments, value like that. Okay. Now I'm also going to put another line in here. Uh, in the event you need to cancel this appointment, please click on the link below. Now what this is going to do here is sends the link um, of the event. So basically for any um, data structure, data types you create, you can create a link for one of those and it'll go, um, you can send it and put it in an email and when the person opens the email, clicks on the link, it'll bring you back to the Bubble app to, um, to a page that has the uh, info um, for that uh, data type. Um, so it's pretty powerful, pretty nice um, functionality that Bubble has built in. Um, that way you can do, similar to what we're doing in this app, sending um, an email to somebody who doesn't have an account um, but when they click on this link, it'll bring them into the app, and it's going to have all of the uh, that specific appointments information um, in it. Uh, let's see. So send email, and then I don't know if you noticed here. So this pop up. So what we have to do, um, it needs to know. Bubble needs to know where to send uh, when they click on the link, what what page to send it to. So what I'm going to do as a placeholder is um, I'm going to go and add a new page um, and we'll call it um, delete appointment. And we're going to clone it from, I think I have a template. Uh, do I have a template in here? Yeah, page template. There we go. All right. So this is my page template. Now one thing I need to make sure I double click on this a type of content is user. I need to make sure that it's a calendar event. So um, when you do create that link, I'm going to go back to the other page here, calendar, and the workflow. Um, let's see, let me go back. Uh, request time slot. All right, so when we go and create this parent group calendars event link, um, again, it's calendar event, so the data type calendar event. When I go to, um, where is it? Delete appointment, I need to make sure that the type of content is calendar event. Otherwise, uh, Bubble won't know to send the correct data to, to it. Um, Workflow, uh, calendar event. Now let's go back to the workflow. Send email. Okay, so the event link now, delete appointment page is there. So basically, when the um, whoever gets the email, so you'll, yourself will get the email, your client will get the email, they'll click on the link, 
it'll come to this um, this page here. And thank you. All right. Now, what you could have done if you wanted is I, I had this set up so that the email goes to both the client as well as to the um, to the account owner yourself, uh, for instance. Now, what you could have done here is um, again I'm right clicking or double clicking with my um, my Mac here. Uh, actually, I want to go and paste. What I could have done is instead of um, sending it to uh, to both of us at the same time, I could have gone and sent it to uh, have one go to myself, creator, email, and then all this other stuff. I could have gone and changed and said, um, yeah. hi. This email confirms appointment for, and then similarly, you know, first name, value, and then, and so on and so forth. So um, you can do that as an option, two steps. So uh, I could have gone and just removed the CC like that, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just uh, keep it all in one email. But just so you're aware, you can break it up into multiple emails, one to your client and one to you, customize the message and, and so forth. So that is all I'm going to cover in this video. Um, so at this point, basically, we um, have enabled a, the client to go request a, um, a time slot and send an email to you as the owner as well as um, to the client and the ability for the client if they need to cancel the um, the appointment they can click on a link from their email to bring it back to the app and um, at the next video I will show how to go and um, delete that um, that appointment um, thank you again for watching to the end and if you have any questions or comments uh, please leave them below, and I appreciate your time. Thank you.